how's it going? So much like my video on how to revise A-level biology, which will be linked below by the way, this is another long overdue video. But at least I hope you can agree with me that it is better late than never. I have to be honest with you guys, when I was doing my A-level and AS chemistry, as much as I loved certain parts of it, there are other parts that I just found so challenging. So if you're in the same boat and you're either preparing for your exams or you're just starting your A-levels or whatever, I can honestly, honestly empathise with you so much. I feel your pain, but as I said also in my biology video, if I can get through it, so can you. And I just hope that by sharing some of the tips that helped me along the way and, you know, a bunch of things that I learned through doing my A-levels, I hope that by sharing that with you, it can just make your journey that little bit easier. So, just as a bit of an introduction for any of you guys who are new here, hi by the way, I studied chemistry, biology and maths at A-level and I also did a psychology AS. After I did my AS and A-levels, I went to Newcastle University to study biomedical sciences and now I'm doing my masters in cancer medicine at King's College London. So it kind of seems like I am forever a student, which is very true, but my point is that I've definitely had my fair share of exams. So I just hope that I can share with you a bunch of things I've learned to, you know, help you guys maybe. I have already made a video sharing with you a bunch of my generic tips and, you know, tricks and techniques and things like that. And I will link that video below. But for today's video, I wanted to share with you some of the things that I specifically did for AS and A-level chemistry. So let's just begin. Number one is go onto the website of your particular exam board and get a copy of the specifications. By doing this, you will automatically have a list of all of the things that the examiners want you to know. And that way, if you can, you know, pin it on your board or save it on your laptop, then that way you know what the examiners want and you know you have something to work towards. It's definitely worth doing this at the start of your course as well, but if you're already midway through and you haven't done that already, don't sweat it, it's not too late. Number two is get yourself a really good revision guide. When I was doing my A-levels, I was on OCR Salters, I believe, that was the exam board. And we got given this massive, crazy, chunky book. And I'll insert a picture of it here if I can find one somewhere. But that book was so big and so daunting. So what I did to kind of help me along the way is invest in some of the, you know, slightly more bite-sized revision guides. I was quite fortunate because my school was selling them at a discount, but I think you can get them on Amazon or eBay. And just for reference, I'll insert a picture of what that looked like here. Honestly, revision guides are just great in general because they can just make the information seem a lot less daunting. Number three is make notes. This does seem like a bit of an obvious one because I feel like a lot of people like to make notes anyway, but the thing that I would say specifically about this is use your big textbook that your school gives you, but in addition to this, also use your revision guide. But I do have to emphasize though that the whole point of making notes is that the process of making notes is what gets your brain engaged and that itself is what helps you learn. So when you come to make your notes, don't bother just copying out everything in the textbook. Try to engage yourself with the information a bit more by rearranging the words and writing things in a few different ways. Number four is, as you go through your revision, create yourself a list of keywords. Now, these keywords can be important words that you need to learn, or they could be words that you find particularly difficult, or they could be quite simple words that you know as soon as you see them, they're going to spark off X, Y, and Z of, you know, the kind of things that you need to learn. Either way, make yourself a list of keywords and put it somewhere where you can see, so on your wall maybe, again on your phone, on your laptop, just so you're constantly being kept up to date. Or I guess a better way of putting it is that you're constantly being engaged with the information. I personally always love making keyword lists just because half the time when it comes to chemistry, I just forget most of the words because there is a lot. Trust me, there is so much. Actually, I don't know why I'm convincing you. If you're doing A-level chemistry, you already know what it's like. So yes, keywords, definite plus. Number five is make good use of past papers because when it comes to topics like chemistry, there's only a certain amount that they can ask you. So lots and lots of questions are just recycled from all of the years below before. So one thing that I used to do is I would go through a couple of past papers 
and then I would get all of the questions from one topic and put them all into one document and then get questions all on a different topic and put those all in one word document. This was a really good way for me personally to compartmentalize the different areas that I need to learn. And then that way it meant that by the time I've finished making notes or reading my notes for one section, I can immediately go and answer questions for all of that one section before moving on to the next. Number six, and this again involves the use of past papers, a really good way is just going through a past paper, or maybe two or three, and answering all the questions. And then when you come to market, have a look and see what your weak points are. And all of the questions that you got wrong after you've already been through your notes and things like that, put all of those questions into a Word document. Now, this is something I did and I labeled that document common mistakes document. So all of the things that I was keep getting wrong or I you know, probably just didn't understand and I needed more work on, I would put them all in one place and then that way I knew that I specifically needed to study one particular area. See, I think this is a really important thing to do, especially in chemistry, because unlike biology where sometimes you might not even need to understand the context of things, sometimes just maybe remembering a word or you know remembering a series of events can get by, get you by. But in chemistry where you automatically require a deeper understanding of something, it's really, really important to identify your weaker areas. Number seven is when it comes to learning things like stru structural compounds or chemicals or things that are just generally quite nitty gritty, find a fun way to present them to yourself. So use colors or pictures and you know make them look pretty or stick them on your wall. Now I can't remember if I've still got the picture or not. If I do I will put it right here but when I was doing chemistry and I think we needed to learn um, the structure of amino acids. I remember I made a picture of all of them and just stuck them on my wall. I really hope I can find that picture. Future Atusan edit, please look hard and see if you can find that picture. But if not, just pretend that there is a wall here full of lots of uh, lovely pictures of amino acids. Number eight is test yourself in multiple ways. So what I mean by this is you can either do question and answer cards, you can ask a friend or a family member to verbally ask you questions, or you can print off blank diagrams that you can annotate. But either way, it's so important to test yourself. And by testing yourself using a number of different methods, it just means that you're engaging with the same information, but in lots of different ways. Last but not least, number nine, and in my opinion, this is quite an important one, and this is learn to be resourceful when it comes to getting answers to your questions. As I said, chemistry can be quite difficult in the sense that sometimes there are certain things that you can't just memorize or you can't just look and think, oh, okay, I get this now. Some parts you really need to dive deep into and you need it to be explained to you. Obviously, my first suggestion would be to find your teacher and ask them for help, although I know that some people struggle with this because I used to. And if that's you and you don't necessarily want to ask your teacher or maybe you just don't have the time or you know something along those lines, Always find good resources and you know what? YouTube is the perfect place to be. Nowadays there are so many videos explaining different chemical compounds and different processes and lots of different things that you might not really understand that well or you want more practice in and it'll be another way for you to just engage with the information. So use YouTube as your teacher. It is a great resource, trust me. Do give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and I will have links on my page for Instagram, Etsy and Patreon if you would like to support me. So my lovelies, those are some of the things that I personally did and honestly I know how stressful A-levels can be you guys but just hang in there. I wish you all the best of luck if you're going through that right now and until next time guys, take care and I'll see you later. Mwah.